tired of your boring keyboard? <laughs> Enter the world of circuit bending. What are the ground rules like in order for a keyboard to actually be circuit bendable? Yeah, I think keyboards are our favorite, but the thing that, that's so crazy is anything that's battery powered is potentially bendable. Yeah. You know, whether you just get one switch on there or you get like twenty switches on yeah. there. You know, it's like it's yeah, all these machines have all yeah, like you're showing off this little musical animal segment and it's got the one I mean, can you do this kind of stuff on like a, an FM synthesis type keyboard? The thing that I think is the the best is that it's always pulse code modulated, you know, solid state stuff. It seems to be the most receptive, you know, yeah. like, uh, you know, and that's what the stuff we want people to practice on. It's mm -hmm. kind of the old thrift store finds. Yeah. Start with the 75 cent uh, kid toy. Paint it your color of choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. paint it whatever choice you want. And then, uh, in our case, white. Yeah, there you go. And then work your way up to your Suzuki Omnicar. So how do we circuit bend? Well, the first step, we like to call this the state of Casio. We remove the screws. Now, we know that this is a Casio keyboard from the 80s, and we know how a Casio sounds. Sure, All right. sure. All right. And once we remove the screws, we've got the inside here, which we call the electronic city. The electronic city. You'll become a sonic explorer and move into your electronic city with the various roads. And you'll notice each of the roads ends in a silver cul-de-sac. So you'll be making sonic shortcuts on the various silver cul-de-sacs and points of two. So the first thing you want to do is trigger a sound. I'll make a beat for you. Okay. This is the thing to do. Well, how about the demo? Okay. So then you take a piece of wire, and you touch one point, to another point. Mm -hmm. Now here is the sonic difference and change. Yeah, play that again. Reproduction of sound. It's no. a, well, what it, are you going to say? It'll give you a, it's more chance based, so mm -hmm. it's going to give maybe a similar style of sound, but it's never going to maybe make the same sound. Right. I guess it depends on the source as well, right? Exactly, yes. Can you plug it into, say, a computer and record at the same time, and you won't get shocked or anything? Of course. Yeah, you can, as long as you have an output on your machine. And some no. machines have outputs, but some don't. And if you don't, you can always add a quarter inch output, like you'd find at any guitar. How would you do that? Well, you would go either right off of the, the, the positive and the negative terminal of the speaker. You would solder it to your traditional quarter inch mono jack that has a positive and a negative terminal. And you've got the one, point 0.1 and point 0.2, you know, and the point 0.1 and point 0.2. And you just take two individual pieces of wire, go the one, one to the one point, and then two to the two point, and you basically have an output.